must put forth effort to become skilled at contemplation in our practice, looking at the elements of our body and mind. And we have to give a great deal of time to this practice of contemplation, developing wisdom. We must constantly apply effort to restrain the chitta or mind from following after the various moods and emotions which arise as we sit. And this restraint over time leads to a strengthening of the chitta and mindfulness, which in turn uh, causes samadhi or lucid calm to arise and grow stronger. Initially, the level of samadhi we can expect is what's referred to as kanika or mo momentary concentration, uh, brief period when the mind has become still. But as we practice more, we might find that the level of calm we're reaching is lasting for much longer periods, in which case we can uh, deduce that we've come to upachara samadhi, or what's called neighborhood concentration. And in this case, the sense of calm can remain even after we've gotten up from our formal sitting. The, we may find that our mind is very calm as we sit or walk uh, after a formal session. However, in the beginning, we can expect after experiencing such calm for the chitta or mind to back out and once again become restless following the various moods and emotions which come to it, in which case we have to once again establish mindfulness or sati and restrain it using the four satipatthana or foundations of mindfulness as our themes of calm and our anchors for the mind or chitta. And this will lead to our samadhi becoming more and more solid. It's up to our paramitas or spiritual perfections how fast this progression uh, might occur to the point where we are able to attain and become fluent in the practice of samadhi. Pra of samadhi. For some, it'll be four years, others uh, five, others a few, uh, just a single year even. It's unsure and up to each individual. What we do know is that we have to put in the causes for this development. We have to practice. And if we do, put in our effort continuously over a long period of time, we can expect to begin attaining even more profound states of calm. For example, apana samadhi, or one-pointed concentration, when the mind is gathered into a deep calm, even more profound and subtle than that of neighborhood or upachara samadhi. When the mind gathers into such calm, the five samadhi factors, uh, vitaka, vichara, uh, directed and sustained thought, piti, sukha, rapture, and pleasure, and finally ekagata, or one-pointedness of mind, will gather together, and the chitta will be imbued with all of them. When the mind has achieved this sort of calm, it doesn't want to think thoughts will naturally not arise because it's so content to rest in the state of lucid calm which it's attained. It's still. However, after a period of time, the mind will have felt as if it's been still for long enough 
and it will back out and become begin to move again, thought will arise. At this point, we should turn this newly uh, powerful and refreshed mind and awareness to contemplate and look at the body as anicca, dukkha, and anatta, impermanent suffering and not self. And this will lead to the chitta gaining wisdom when it sees the body as not a self. Similarly, this strengthened chitta or mind will perceive other elements as not self as well. For example, if it turns towards the second foundation of mindfulness, mindfulness of Vedana or feeling, it will also perceive it as not self and will separate out from it. Initially, this is difficult, but over time we'll become more and more skilled to the point where we can sit and walk and enter states of kanaka or momentary concentration. And then when we sit in formal practice, we can expect to attain upachara or neighborhood concentration. Then as we become even more skilled and fluent in this practice of samadhi, we may find that we are able to maintain this same measure of calm, upachara samadhi, in all of our postures. And that when we sit formal practice, apana samadhi, or an even deeper level, arises. The practice circles like this. We attain a level of samadhi, we contemplate, and then the contemplation prepares the minds for even more profound states of samadhi during the mind's next descent into calm. And the fruits of such calm stay with the mind and body for long periods after the sitting has ended we may find that in our daily lives, our mind and body feel light and even feel as if the mind is separating out a bit from the body due to the power of our concentration. When the mind is imbued with such calm, it wakes up, pity, rapture, sati, mindfulness, samadhi, concentration, all the bojanga or the seven factors of awakening are present and powerful. And when we practice with this mindfulness continuously, we begin to grow more and more skilled at bringing the mind to calm and also at seeing the body as uh, impermanent, not self and suffering. And once again, such insight leads to even deeper states of samadhi. Even if we don't do anything special, still if we keep this practice up, um, then especially if we've already attained the fruits of upachara or neighborhood concentration, then the mind and body will be imbued with this sense of well-being from samadhi on a continuous basis. And when we're calm in this way, there's less need to protect and restrain forcibly the mind. It likes to stay still after it's tasted what joy such stillness provides what uh, well-being samadhi can give it. And we may find that it grows calmer and calmer until it can achieve no deeper state of calm. It feels as if it's completely full and there's no empty space, it's tight. Our samadhi has reached its limit. When this happens, once again, we should turn it towards contemplating the body. 
And this same way of practice circling around leads to great fruit. However, we also may find that we're in a place where we can use our samatha practice or our samadhi practice of the parikama, the single meditation object, to bring the mind to deeper states of calm if it's not yet reached its limit. We may use the meditation word budo to quiet the mind or likewise with the breath. And as we become more and more skilled at such, then we'll be able to cross over the various, various moods and mental impressions which arise in the mind, not getting caught in them and not identifying with them. We will transcend the hindrances that keep the mind in bondage. When the mind has achieved these deeper states of concentration, such as, such as upachara, neighborhood, or apana, uh, singleness of mind, then when we do turn it to contemplate the body or uh, reality, then uh, an awakening experience can occur quickly within three days, even two days, seeing the Dhamma with in a, a mind imbued with such calm is not difficult. However, many of us may not yet have such a level of samadhi, but being people in the modern world, we may have quite a, deal, a good deal of wisdom. And in this case, we should utilize the strength that we do have and contemplate regularly every day. We can still use the faculty of wisdom to contemplate skillfully. So these are the two ways that practice can function. Either we use our wisdom quality to develop samadhi or we use our samadhi practice to develop wisdom. Uh, as I stated above, the practice of contemplating the body prepares the mind for deeper states of concentration. But similarly, by bringing the mind one time and again to its meditation objects and calming it, we pave the way for deeper and more profound wisdom to arise. This is the path of sila morality, samadhi, and panya, or wisdom. We may find that if we have a lot of work or duties, bringing the mind to such states of refined calm is very difficult. In this case, we can look directly uh, at the experience of this and we can maintain a constant mindfulness of the citta itself, the third foundation, looking at how it's affected by the daily activities. We can endeavor to keep a consistent level of mindfulness on our meditation object or parikama. For example, the meditation word Buddha or Budo. And if we can maintain our meditation word or our other meditation object in all postures, this will help us a great deal. The lineage of Longpur Mun, the uh, preeminent and most famous of the Kruba Ajans of this last century, stressed and emphasized the practice of samadhi constantly. It's our way of making the citta or mind quiet. And even if we have other work, the great teachers advised us to constantly keep the practice in mind as much as we were able. Similarly, we have to use wisdom 
to know how to keep our practice going in the midst of daily life. Many people will have to contemplate first and only after preparing the mind will they be able to achieve these deeper states. Once they find calm, they'll see through the body and this will help samadhi arise at even deeper levels. However, others have a different situation and find that their wisdom faculty is the one that they must develop first. And from this, wisdom uh, leads to greater states of calm. We have to look at the body. And I myself, when I had found some level of calm, thought that the mind was powerful enough to move straight to looking at the mind itself. But Long Por Cha advised me time and again that I should turn it back to the body. And initially I was reluctant to do this. I wanted to move to look at the mind directly and quickly. But when I did, my samadhi deteriorated uh, very quickly to the point where it seemed as if I'd never practiced almost. The liking and disliking, the getting lost in various moods and emotions all came back. And if one experiences such deterioration in their calm, they may think that their practice has completely disappeared. However, in such a situation, one should maintain one's mindfulness and effort, putting forth and endeavoring to keep the practice going. And when samadhi does return, it'll be even deeper than it initially was. This is natural. Samadhi will become full, become uh, deep enough that we can go no deeper and then it will back up and the mind will extract itself and come close to a normal state again. But in such a case, we simply repeat the process and will go deeper and deeper each time. This is patient endurance at work and it's an extremely important quality in this context of samadhi practice. So all of this is up to our paramitas, our spiritual perfections. All of them help us, uh, this helps us understand the Dhamma. And this developing of samadhi is essential. It's something we have to think about and figure out how to cultivate well. When we learn to see the citta better, we will gain the ability to move past Vedana or painful feeling if we want. And the mind will have the capability of pulling away from painful feeling, not getting lost and overwhelmed by it. It will have the power to fight against the painful feelings that arise in practice. And this is the practice of the Satipatthana. So I hope all those present endeavor to cultivate the practice in this way and take this as a encouragement towards putting forth effort to achieve the states of calm I've spoken of and of liberation.